Welcome back. I really trust that you've begun to understand and think about and pray over some of the very fundamental uh, understandings and, and, and learnings about purpose-driven and being purpose-driven. More important than anything, the whole idea and concept of being a healthy church. Now we've started to think through the circles and as we begin, we want to uh, start with the outermost circle, which is the community. So the question we want to tackle today is how do we reach the community? How does a local church have a strategy, have a plan, have a, have a uh, program to reach the local people in their church? Who are we reaching? Why are we doing it? And how are we doing it? Those are three questions I want to be able to answer in the next uh, video and a couple of videos as we move forward. So when we think about reaching our community, essentially we go back to the promise that Jesus made to us, which says, Come along with me and I will show you how to fish for the souls of men. Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. The key word here is show. Jesus says, I will show you. I will give you an understanding of the people around you. I will help you realize and see what I am doing in the community and how you could come in line with me. That's something I think we really need to understand. It's God the one who's God is the one who's doing the work, right? The Spirit of God is already out there. He's already reaching people for Christ. He's already moving hearts. And the church kind of comes alongside and dovetails that to, to come in line with what the Spirit of God is already doing. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus talks about fishing. And the idea of fishing in the Old Testament was never just one line and somebody goes after one fish. It was always as a net. You throw a net out and the fish bite, the fish catch, right? And it depends on the catch, it depends on what God is doing. To the disciples, the Lord Jesus said, throw your net on the other side. And suddenly they caught a whole lot of fish. So it has a lot to do with uh, teamwork. It has a lot to do with the net. So we need to think as a church and as, as a community, how do we spread uh, the gospel in a way that many get an opportunity to respond not just one person and not leave it in the hands of just one or two people I want us to think through that because the more we think that just individuals are going to reach people for Christ while that is true while that is very true it is not uh, it is not a strategy that has worked in the past so first and foremost we have to answer the question who uh, who are the people we are fishing for or who are the people we are going after? Uh, to, to, to some people, to some of the disciples, Jesus said, I've sent you to the lost sheep of Israel. I've sent you to the lost sheep of Israel. To Paul, he says, I'm sending you to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Do you know, do I know exactly who we're trying to reach? Because many of us are in different cities. Some of us are, I'm in New Delhi and you are in a, maybe perhaps another smaller city. Perhaps all the people are the same, same culture, same ethnic background, or same religion, perhaps, um, or a religious faith kind of thing. In my city, there's everyone is living there. So if I'm trying to reach absolutely everybody, it's not going to be feasible. My church can't do that. I need to first and foremost answer the question, who am I trying to reach? When I answer that question, uh, I will have a better idea of what kind of strategy. Now, how do I know who I'm trying to reach? Well, where is your church located? Where is your church located? Wherever your church is located, you look around. Just look at the community. Go for a walk in the community. Who are the people who live in that community? What is the economic uh, level of those people, right? What, what are the needs of those people? And we look into all of these matters. But first and foremost, that's your cue. As you walk into your community, demographically, you look at, okay, here's where we live, or here's where our church is, and here is the kind of um, culture of the people that we're looking for, right? What kind of people live in your area? If you're following in the notes with me, and you can always download it or, or write to us, and we'll send you the notes, so you can follow with me in the notes. But I, I really want you to think with me. I just want you to think out loud, write down as many uh, thoughts as you have, you know, fill out questions, things like that. As you walk to the, the community, ask yourself, what are their fears? What do these people fear the most? You could be in a small town, you could be in a village, you could be in, uh, in an absolute you know, rural area, or you could be in a bustling mega city, right? But as you walk through the city and you think about people and look at people, so what are they worried about? What are their concerns? What are, they, uh, what are their fears? 
And the best way to do is actually talk to people. When you, when you ask people, when you uh, interview people, talk to people. The worst people or the worst situation or the worst source to get your information about your community is the church people themselves. Because a lot of us just so cut off. We're cut off from reality, cut off from because we live in our little bubble, you know. And we need to be able to just, just jump over the wall and get in, in the lives of people around us. So the big question is who? Who are we trying to reach? And how do we find that out? Take a walk. Go through the, the colony. Look around where your, where your house is, where your, where your uh, church is. Look at the regular people. What are the most number of people there? What language do they speak? Uh, what culture they are? What, what faith do they have? Who do they, uh, what, what do they fear? Who do they fear? You know, uh, things like that. Uh, spiritually, where are they at spiritually? Are they, uh, are they uh, very God-fearing or are they absolutely not God-fearing at all? Where are they on the scale of things? Are they, are, they, uh, are they superstitious or are they just money-minded and basically uh, the kind of city people that feel, you know, we have to make life on our own, uh, do things on our own? What we have to do, have to understand is that people are not alike. People are not alike, okay? We, they're not like us, they're not even like each other. So unless we get out there, unless we talk to them, unless we actually find out what is going on in their lives, we're not gonna be able to really understand. I think that's a lot in terms of just the question, who? Okay, but as you move forward in that, we need to also ask one more question. What does a fish think like? How does a fish uh, per perceive its surroundings? Okay, when you're thinking about the the lost, when you're thinking about your community and trying to reach your community, more important than anything is how do they see life? How do they perceive life? And when you think like a fish, you begin to think about your environment. You begin to think about your your surroundings. You begin to think about your fears and your own uh, things. And this is a gracious matter. It, it, it has to do with what Paul was saying, or Peter was saying, when he when he says, "Be tender-hearted." Okay, think about your 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 uh, about the lost. What are they struggling with? Because a lot of us have the promises of God. You know, we know what we want to believe in. We know uh, the promises of God. We know what we can trust. But many of them live with fears and uncertainties that we will never understand. Again, we have to ask them and talk to them. Let me leave you this verse. Be wise in the way you act towards those who are not believers. Be wise in the way you act towards those who are not believers. It's been a long time since you and I were an unbeliever, right? So we can't remember what it's like to be fearful, what it's like to be trying to reach a, a force in heaven or a, or a God in heaven that we don't understand. We have been so close to the Lord for so long that sometimes we forget how an unbeliever thinks and what are his fears and what are his concerns. As we move forward, in the next video, we'll talk about how to meet those needs and, and make that connect with unbelievers in your community. Keep thinking, keep writing, and uh, wait for the next video.